Welcome to the Airlift Workshop with Al, Airlift's Engineering Project Manager. Today we'll be working on a Chevy Silverado 2500. We're installing Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate to eliminate squat, trailer sway, rough ride, and bottoming out, allowing us to tow and haul with safety and comfort. This video doesn't replace your installation manual, so grab yours out of the box or get a digital copy at airliftcompany.com and let's get started. With your frame on jack stands and the axle lowered, remove the jounce bumpers from the jounce bumper brackets on both sides with a pry bar or large screwdriver. Remove the emergency bracket bolt from the inside of the driver's side frame rail and remove the bolts from the front and back of the jounce bumper plates. To assemble the air springs, first insert the elbow fitting on top of the airbag. Tighten with your finger, then make one and a half turns with a wrench. Put the roll plate on first, and then put the bracket on top of that. Repeat on the bottom side. Position the assembled air spring so that the upper brackets nest around the jounce bumpers. For trucks without a fifth wheel hitch bracket, insert two U-bolts through the upper mounting holes. Cap with four nuts and flat washers, torquing the U-bolts evenly in a crisscross pattern. With a fifth wheel hitch bracket, drill into the frame and use the self-tapping screws. Attach the previously removed emergency brake cable with the new bracket and lock nut. Use the inside forward leg of the U-bolt on the driver's side and tighten securely. Insert two 3 8 inch carriage bolts through the lower bracket and insert the clamp bar over the bolts, capping each with an evenly torqued nut and washer. Attach the brake lines to the lower bracket and attach the brake cable on the passenger side forward of the axle. When cutting air lines, never cut from the side. You leave a jagged edge and ruin the hose. Instead, use a sharp razor blade to get a crisp, clean cut. A hose cutter will also do the trick. You can decide where to mount your inflation valves, which will also determine the route your airline will travel along the frame of the car. We'll use the bumper here. But other options for inflation valve placement include the license plate recess and the wheel well flanges. Cut the airline assembly into two equal lengths and to install the Schrader valve, slide on the airline clamp and then attach the valve. Clamp the airline onto the valve, drill a hole for the inflation valve, place a nut and star washer on the air valve, push the inflation valve through the hole and use a rubber washer, flat washer, and another nut to secure it in place. Tighten the nuts to secure the assembly and push on the valve cap. Based on your valve location decision, route the airline along the frame, avoiding heat sources and sharp bends, and allowing the appropriate amount of slack. Cut your airline according to manual specifications, slip the heat protector over the line, and insert it into the push to connect fitting. To install the heat shield, bend the tabs to provide a half inch of dead air space between the exhaust pipe and the heat shield. Then attach the heat shield to the exhaust pipe using the clamps. Finally, bend the heat shield for maximum clearance to the air spring. To make sure your airlift kit is airtight, inflate the system to 35 psi and spray a soap solution on all connections and valves while checking for exiting air bubbles. That just about does it. Thanks for joining us in the Airlift Workshop.